SpaceX is in the final stages of preparing its new lunar starship for 2023. The starship is expected to carry humans to the moon as part of NASA's Artemis mission, but first, it must complete its first orbital test flight. Let's take a closer look. The Starship is intended to be a fully reusable launch vehicle that can carry both crew and cargo to a variety of destinations in space, including the Moon, Mars, and beyond. It is designed to be launched on top of the Super Heavy rocket, which is currently in development by SpaceX. The Super Heavy rocket will provide the necessary thrust to lift the Starship into orbit, while the Starship will be responsible for carrying payloads and crew to their destination. After the initial launch, the rocket is responsible for delivering the Starship crew capsule to orbit around the Earth. After it has done so, the booster will detach and steer itself towards a soft landing back at the launch pad. While this feat seemed almost impossible at first, SpaceX rockets have been doing it successfully for several years now. The next stage would involve the booster picking up a fuel tanker and carrying it into orbit as well. This fuel tanker will then be used to replenish the Starship for its voyage towards Mars. Once en route, the craft will deploy solar panels to harvest energy from the sun in an attempt to save precious onboard fuel for what will be an exciting and groundbreaking landing on the Red Planet. According to Musk's vision, these crafts and their crew will remain in Earth's orbit until a planetary alignment brings the Earth and Mars closer together. This is a window that opens once every 26 months. The long-term plan for SpaceX is to have many hundreds of spaceships waiting in orbit to depart en masse as part of the Mars Colonial Fleet. Perhaps the most important part for this entire plan to work is the reusability of the boosters. Musk's plan revolves around making sure that each spaceship is capable of being reused as much as possible. He states that there is no way to have a self-sustaining colony on Mars without reusability. It's a fundamental part of the plan. He also adds that if the wooden sailing ships from the old days were not reusable, the United States probably wouldn't have existed. SpaceX estimates that it will be able to use each of its rocket boosters a whopping thousand times, each tanker a hundred times, and each spaceship twelve times at least. The first missions are only estimated to carry around 100 people on each ship, but gradually that number is expected to increase to more than 200. According to these estimates, putting a million people on the surface of Mars could take anywhere from 40 to 100 years after the maiden voyage. The reusability of the rockets also means that once there, the crafts can then be used to return to Earth whenever needed. After a few uncrewed cargo supply missions have already landed on Mars, the human phase of colonization will be finally ready to begin. One of the biggest hurdles that stand in the way is the Red Planet's notoriously thin atmosphere. NASA had to be extra careful when landing their Curiosity rover on the planet, which weighed a mere 2,000 pounds and is a tiny fraction of the total payload that the manned missions will carry. This is one of the reasons why SpaceX continues to perfect its supersonic retro rocket technology, so they can gradually enter the Martian atmosphere and lower a very heavy spacecraft onto the surface using this reusable method. That's not all, though. Entering the atmosphere is another problem that needs attention. The craft needs to withstand a heated entry to the planet and perform a propulsive landing while still being capable of refueling and going back to Earth to start over again. The first few journeys would probably just drop off supplies and set up a propellant depot on the planet, so return trips are possible when needed. After the supply runs are complete, humans can finally make their way to Mars. The first crew will need to rely on digging beneath the surface and dredging up buried ice. This will be used as a water source which will eventually power the entire colony. When the essential crews consisting of scientists and engineers have finally been set up, competition will start over the first few seats it can take willing individuals to the newly colonized planet. In the coming years, we can expect to see the Starship playing a key role in a variety of space-based missions, including crewed missions to the ISS, lunar missions, and even interplanetary travel. Its versatility and reliability will make it an invaluable tool for exploring the final frontier and unlocking the full potential of space travel. The success of the Artemis program largely depends on if the Starship is ready on time. The NASA Artemis program is an effort to place astronauts on the lunar surface and develop an ongoing presence there. Artemis 1 launched on November 16, 2022 after having missed its previous launch windows. 
The program's name is derived from Artemis, the Greek goddess of the moon and twin sister to Apollo, whose namesake program first brought astronauts to our natural satellite on July 20th, 1969. The Artemis program is a renaming of several earlier activities NASA was already undertaking to return humans to the moon. These were mandated by President Trump's Space Policy Directive 1, which tasked the agency with focusing on missions to the moon. In 2019, Vice President Mike Pence set an ambitious deadline to land humans at the lunar south pole by 2024. Perhaps the most ambitious of the Artemis mission's objectives involves using the moon as a stepping stone for a mission to Mars. Robots have done all the detective work on Mars so far, but NASA now aims to send astronauts there by the 2030s. With a future target set on the red planet, the return to the moon will be used to provide us with the knowledge and tools to better navigate our solar system. Between 1969 and 1972, six missions took place in which 12 people walked on the surface of the moon, all of them men. For such a high-risk mission, the most experienced astronauts were required, and at the time there were no women at NASA who had suitable test flight experience. For a long time, space was viewed as an industry, primarily for men, and it wasn't until 1978 that NASA selected its first female astronauts. As of March 2022, 75 women have been to space, and the Artemis moon landing will serve as a reminder of changing times. While it's currently undecided who will be chosen, it will likely be one of NASA's astronauts who has already worked aboard the ISS. In December 2020, NASA announced the Artemis team of astronauts, which included nine men and women. In August 2022, Chief Astronaut Reed Wiseman announced that all active NASA astronauts are eligible for Artemis missions, with crew selections to be determined at a later date. Artemis II is scheduled for launch in 2024 and is expected to carry the first four astronauts. The Orion capsule will take the crew farther from Earth than humans have ever traveled before. The crew will complete a lunar flyby and return to Earth, evaluating the spacecraft systems while carrying humans. Artemis II will demonstrate critical functions including mission planning, system performance, crew interfaces, and navigation and guidance beyond low Earth orbit. After launching, SLS will orbit the Earth twice, firing its engines to build up the speed to push it to the moon. The entire mission will last approximately 21 days. Artemis III is the second crewed mission of the program and the first to land astronauts on the moon. The crew will visit the moon's south pole to search for water, study its surface, test technologies, and learn to work on a world outside Earth. This will see the next man and first woman step onto the lunar surface. Provided that previous missions have been successful, the astronauts will shoot towards the moon, using the lunar lander to lower two people to the moon's south polar region. They will remain on the moon for around a week. History books may one day reflect on 2023 as the year of the lunar landers, with a launch schedule jammed full of robotic missions to Earth's nearest neighbor. The new space age came alive last year with the opening of the James Webb Space Telescope, the new super-sensitive observatory in the sky, and the maiden voyage of Artemis, NASA's Moon to Mars campaign that soon will return humans to deep space. Not to mention when the U.S. Space Agency intentionally moved an asteroid for the first time. Science journals are bound to be packed with discoveries as a result of those success stories broadening our understanding of the universe. Though 2023 might have big shoes to fill in the cosmos, it promises to keep launch pads scorching hot. Many upcoming missions will set the stage for NASA's moon endeavors, shipping supplies and experiments to its surface ahead of astronauts' arrival in 2025 or later, as well as kickstarting a future lunar economy. That's largely thanks to NASA's Commercial Lunar Payload Services Program, established in 2018 to recruit the private sector to help deliver cargo to the moon. NASA selected commercial partner Intuitive Machines to send a lander to Schroeder's Valley, a region on the near side of the moon. During the IM-1 mission, the lander, called Nova C, will study how rocket exhaust and space weather affect the lunar surface. The mission is slated to launch on a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket from Cape Canaveral. The spacecraft, a six-sided cylinder standing on two legs, will carry five NASA instruments, among other unrelated commercial pieces of cargo, and demonstrate advanced landing technology. Fun fact, the lander will stay warm in frigid space like a lot of people do, with a coat. Rather than reinvent the wheel, Intuitive Machines partnered with Columbia Sportswear to use some of its insulation material on the spacecraft. Perhaps the biggest launch of the year will be the first orbital test flight for SpaceX's Starship. 
After a successful splashdown of the Orion spacecraft in the Pacific Ocean, NASA Administrator and former Senator Bill Nelson shared that his agency plans to go to Mars by the end of 2030. Senator Nelson struck an upbeat tone after NASA had a great Artemis One mission, and the remarks were made during a post-splashdown press conference, in which he also shared details for SpaceX's Starship Lunar Lander. The event was attended by several agency officials, including Michael Serafin, NASA's Artemis One mission manager, who shared his final thoughts on Orion's performance as it entered the Earth at breakneck speeds for a successful landing. Throughout its journey to the moon and back, Orion performed better than NASA engineers had initially expected. The spacecraft's power generation, done through solar panels, generated more power than expected. As part of the mission, NASA added additional test objectives to stress the vehicle and learn more about its performance for future missions. The next Artemis mission will involve a crew, and not only will NASA use the data for the next mission, but it will also make changes to the ship. Administrator Nelson also shared crucial details about SpaceX's Starship Lunar Lander. This is currently the only vehicle that has been chosen by NASA to land humans on the moon as part of the Artemis program. He announced that SpaceX plans to do an uncrewed landing in 2023 and then to do the crewed landing in late 2024. While delays are possible due to the Starship being a brand new concept, everything suggests that the rocket is on schedule for now. If you like this video, you may also enjoy this one, which talks about SpaceX's new artificial gravity rocket. Do you think the Starship Lunar Lander will be ready in time for the moon mission? Please share your thoughts in the comment section below.